car coming out from the top. Go from the bottom. That's the top. See how they're streaking up and down, guys? That's what I mean. There it is, right there. Those days, guys, where you wake up and go, it's going to be epic. get spring whitefish here on Lake Simcoe. Um, not much different than ice fishing, I'll tell you that. I'll explain why. Um, so right now, sun's just coming up. You can see in my background. It's a beautiful morning, but we got some good wind coming in. We only have a couple hours of fish. Uh, so hopefully we get a couple fish topside for you. Just missed one there. Um, yeah, so I'm trying to shallow spot right now. See if these fish are active, which Market one right now, so we'll like to get this guy. All right, guys, like I was saying, uh, fishing the shallow shoal right on top of the shoal early in the morning. As the sun's coming up right now, I'm gonna give it another 15 minutes, if that. If I'm not marking much, um, I'm gonna just move down the shoal a bit deeper and uh, see where these fish are at. But a good thing to remember is that early in the morning, before the sun comes up, these fish like to come up and feed. You know, the light is you know at its lowest that it's gonna be for the rest of the day. And right now we have a midge fly hatch happening. So these midge flies, um, you know, are basically hatching on top of the surface, and then basically the little bugs you see everywhere. So what these fish are doing, they're coming up shallow, grabbing midge flies, coming back down. So a good spot to start is really shallow, top of the shoal, you catch these fish as they're coming up to get those midge fly hatch. So that's what I'm doing right now in the morning. I've got a fish streaking up right now. Let's see if he takes it here. Oh. Come on. Come on. So that's an indication right now. I'm looking at my screen. I just told you fish were streaking up. Uh, using the meeks in the bottom, a high hook, and I'll go through that after. But the reason for that, it's still there, uh, is again that midge fly hatch. These fish are coming up to the surface. So if you have a high hook on there, as they're coming up, they might see your high hook and then take that. So it's good to have two options on there. I always have meeks in the bottom high hook on top in springtime and uh, you're going to catch kind of 50 50 some on the bottom some on the top it's good to have those options but i'll go through exactly how to tie those high hooks and uh, how far apart to have them all right well i got hooked up here i thought they were perch streaking up and down up and down and then uh yeah, then I just kind of said, oh well, I'll try to catch perch, and then this rod bent shows you that it's not perch, it's a nice white fish. There you go. Right on the high hook, guys. That's what I mean. I thought they were perch, marking fish coming up and down, up and down. And uh, that's what these white fish are doing. They're going after these midge fly hatch, little larvae that kind of float, and they're all over the place right now. So having that high hook is key. right here. Got the high hook right here. Just like that. I'll show you guys in a minute. That's what it's going to be. It's a beautiful fish. If you want to keep a fish for dinner, here's one. Keep just like that. Nice fish. So beautiful. So I can turn this camera around for you guys. Right in the sun here. There you go. There's a beautiful Lake Simcoe whitefish on the high hook. This is just a small natural. Yep, small natural. This is beautiful. This is perfect for dinner tonight. Kids were asking for some whitefish and got some nice whitefish chocolates. 
like I was saying, guys, I'll show you real quick. Use it. So I got the high hook right here. This is what that fish hit. You can put whatever you want on the high hook. Um, I put sometimes a tube, small tube that goes behind the meat, so I'll put that down. Um, little nymphs. You can put anything, guys. I keep trying different things. I'll show you right here. I have the dace meats tied up here. And then that high hook right here. Just like that. That's just a little tube on there. See that or not, but little tube just like that. So just that's just a Meeks tube there. You can see how high it go. So there's my Meeks here, and there's my high hook. So I'm about the length, almost like the rod. This is six foot six, and uh, you go at least five feet up, guys. Some people might think, wow, that's super high, but that's key for these fish. The higher, the better. Make them chase for those uh, because sometimes if you have your high hook too close to your meeks, it kind of counteracts with each other, where fish is going down, and it's like, oh, what's, what's that, what's going on? Um, when they see it up high, they kind of, they're more committed to go up and see what's going on when it's that much higher up above your uh, your bottom bait. So that's what I'm doing right now. Let me try to get another fish here. I can mark one right now. Be a perch. Not wait, it's not fighting at all. But, yeah, it's way too heavy for a perch. <laughs> Another beautiful white fish. Again, I thought that was a perch. this fish and that one was on the high hook so that's two fish on the high hook the last two weeks it's pretty much been a 50 50 split right now I'm marking another one on top here Perch mixed in there. Oh, just missed the bite there. Felt like a perch bite. There we go. Just like that. I'm in a school of whiteies right now, guys. It's crazy. These white fish. <laughs> it looks like a school of perch. It's crazy. This is all on a high hook. But that's the key. It's just moving around. Don't spend too much time on a dead zone. This is my third spot in, you know, 40 minutes. I don't spend too much time on the spot. If I don't feel right, it doesn't look right, um, I pack up and move. You don't have to go far. Another decent white fish, I think. That's, see that. Oh, this one caught from the bottom of the knees. There you go, like I was saying. That's a big white fish. That's a big white fish. Wow. That was in the bottom hook on the meat. Meat there. I'll show you guys that in a minute. That's a decent white fish. Show you guys some nice fish and we'll put her back. There you go. There's another nice white fish. Look at the side of this one. This is a nice one. On the bottom. So like I was saying earlier, it's a 50-50 split. I got two in a high hook, one in the bottom meegs. Beautiful thick white fish. This one's a stalker. He's got the left peck and the adipose clipped. So let's put this one back. Got lots of fish in the screen right now. No worse for wear on that fish. It's straight back down. I didn't get my own that. I'm gonna get back down there. There is a lot of fish down there right now. So it's pretty fun when you get to uh, get on a school of whitefish. Springtime. Springtime is so much fun. Not sure if you guys can see that graft, but I'll point it in there just so you can see what I'm looking at. 
So if you look at that high hook right now, that's maybe first, but look at it from the bottom, coming up, coming up. See, that's a small mark to me. That to me, that's a perch. But I was full twice already today. So I'm not uh, discounting anything right now. So that's a bigger mark coming up from the top, or from the bottom and top. See how they're streaking up and down, guys? That's what I mean. About. There it is, right there. That's what I mean about. I mean about streaking up and down these fish are just chasing probably midge flies, the larva, anything. They're just all over the map as you saw on that graph Ooh, that came out good for you guys but um, it's just absolutely ridiculous how these fish act like perch you know they act like little fish coming up and down up and down and up and down. That's something you would see on Cook's Bay when you're fishing for perch. It's one again on a high hook so another big white fish. Oh there's still a big white here. There you go. Whitey. There you have it. Nice white fish. A couple boats coming on, so there you go. Another nice white fish on a high hook. Let's put this one back. There you go. Straight back to the bottom. And again, my graph is just lit up right now with fish. Again, not that I don't want people coming up on me, but I don't want people coming up on me. I'm fishing 60 feet, but right beside me is very shallow. This can spook these fish when the boat's coming by. It's Simcoe. Um, when you're on fish, people want to be on fish too, and I get it. Just trying to have some courtesy, not driving right up on guys. I have it all the time. Fishing here, and the guys are, I can literally push my rod into their boat. So have some courtesy, guys. You know what? I worked hard this morning trying to find this, this school of whiteies that I'm on. And... Uh, Listen, there's lots of fish around. It's not the only spot on the lake with fish, that's for sure. So I got another one streaking up here. There's those guys there, that's who ruined a good fishing morning right there. Just waiting for me to leave so they can stop on my spot. Right there. There we go. Came back for it again. That's a better one too. You hit that one time, missed it, and then came back again. And there's fish just all over the map right now. It's crazy. Spot here right now. So we're gonna release these fish, just bring them up slow. So there's no harm in catch and releasing whitefish. There we have it. Another beautiful whitefish, just like that. On the high hook. Let's get this one back. As you guys can see, I'm fishing alone today. Um, I wanted to come out on a solo mission and trying to get this video done. I got some footage from the last two weeks when we did the whole uh, Spring Whitey Open. Um, so here's a few clips, some good hook sets from the last couple weeks out here. days guys 
where you wake up and go, it's gonna be epic. I had a plan in mind was I have some footage from two weeks ago or for the last two weeks for whitefish and I said I gotta get out there just by myself and film a spring whitey show or show video whatever you want to call it and uh, I think I've landed on a gold mine right now and hopefully you guys are enjoying this video getting you all pumped out pumped up to get out here yeah look at side highway That's a big one. That's a big one. And again, there's another beautiful white fish. Just like that. Gorgeous. You gotta come out to Simcoe, catch some of these. Well, that was an epic morning. Uh, my battery died out on the water, so that's why I'm in the house. Finishing off this video, um, yeah, it was crazy. I left the big camera on. It doesn't last too long with the battery just because the fishing was so good. I wanted to catch everything on film, which I caught most of it, but I, you know, I didn't catch all of it on film. But I got a good, a good segment in there for you guys. But I wanted to show you guys what I'm using. I'm using a seven foot medium rod. I do have a medium light that I use also. Um, on the bottom, obviously I have the Meigs. Uh, Dace was working really well today, but I caught probably 80% of my fish on the high hook. So I got my meats on the bottom, and then about 50 to 60 inches above, I'll put my high hook there. And I'm just using the meats tube here. Uh, same tubes are used to put in the back of the meats. That's what I'm using on a drop shot kind of setup hook right here. It's got swivel already in it. It uh, helps with tangles. It's great that way, and it just flutters in the water column like that. These fish were streaking up and down like it was crazy. They're come from the top, come from the bottom. There's, I thought they were perch. They're all white fish. And like I said earlier, <clears throat> they're just chasing those, those midge fly, uh, the, the hatch that's happening right now. So there's little uh, microscopic uh, larvae kind of just all over the water column. So these fish are just streaking up and down. So that's why you're, I was catching them on both bottom and top, but it was mostly a top hook bite today. Um, but yeah, that's all I'm using guys. <clears throat> as far as location, if you've caught fish in those in winter spots and you have it on your Navionics, just start there. That's exactly what I do. Um, I take my Navionics on my phone and then I'll go, you know, where to have a good day there on the winter time and I just head straight there. And then work my way from those shoals out a little bit deeper. So today they were about 60 feet of water. I tried 25, I tried 18, I tried the 40s and then as I moved down the shoal, that 60 seemed to be the key location today. Uh, there was fish everywhere and it was great. So. Yeah, so start off where you uh, where you left off. That's kind of how the spring goes on Lake Simcoe. Um, and then it's probably good for the next couple weeks here. Then come, come second week of June, the whiteys kind of, you know, uh, disappear in the way they kind of go in their, their summer grounds, you want to call that. And then I move on to something else. But um, there's still some time left, guys. Go have some fun on, on some spring whiteys. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you haven't subscribed yet, press that subscribe button. More videos to come. And I'll see you in the water.